everyone, I'm Carol O'Halloran and welcome to Over 50, So What? And yes, I'm definitely over 50, which I was just reminded of recently when I was told I needed to wear glasses for driving. Another adventure in the journey of life. Now, a lot of you watching can probably relate to the hesitancy of having to wear glasses and it's taking a bit of getting used to. But my first experience of wearing my new driving glasses at night was very interesting. Everything was bright and sparkling and shining. I felt like I was in high definition. I felt I was in the Fast and Furious movie. Now today on the show, we're having another chat to the lovely ladies from the Pink Dragons to learn how we can get involved just for fun. You don't have to get serious. For newbies, we have a fitness segment after the break. Please join us. And lastly, we go on a link social outing on the tram boat. Even people with limited mobility can come along. Let's get into it. Welcome to Pink Dragons. <laughs> There's two things that bring us together. The first one is because we like each other. You make friends for life. The second one is dragging it over. <laughs> On the water and off, we're a family. Hello. I didn't put your beer in the fridge. <gasps> I've been too busy. <laughs> I was Skyping with her son and I said, I'm going to go dragon boat racing. And he looked to the right and went, what? I went, dragon boat racing. He said, how big's the boat? I went, oh, great. Thank you very much. I hear my with what I got. Well, dragons are back. The most exhilarating Yay. performance Yay. ever. Hi, Jules and Caroline. Welcome to Over 50 So What? Hi. Hi. Now, um, Jules, you were inspired by seeing the movie The Pinkies Are Back, but Caroline, you were in the movie, weren't you? Yeah, and, and I have to put my hand up and take a little bit of credit for actually making it all happen as well. Well, not <laughs> making it happen. I didn't make it happen, but it was a conversation in the pub late one night after training with um, Lisa, who, Lisa Bird, um, who's the producer, um, and she was making a, she decided to make a film about dragon boating, but she was having problems getting kind of a team to commit to sort of working with her, and I said off the cuff, you should come and talk to the pinkies, thinking mm, promotional material, we should get some good still shots, never dreaming for a minute that we would end up having a feature film out of it. We had such a ball making it, it was fabulous. It's actually really nice when we did the premieres because we saw grown men laughing and crying and, you know, the whole works. Showing on TVNZ here, but it's on, um, you can... Google it and access it from a whole pile of different platforms and it's on international flights on Air New Zealand. Yes, where I saw it. <laughs> so how long did it take, that whole filming process? Probably filmed over maybe two and a half, three years. We had a horrendous time because we lost three paddlers within a really short space of time. Um, so um, just succumbed to this horrible disease that we all have. Um, and it... Uh, you know, with that, three three paddlers kind of hit us very hard and a few people kind of dropped away and a couple of other people moved and we got down to having seven core people in our team um, and you can't do dragon boating with only seven people. So that whole drive to recruit new members um, when our entry criteria is so high is um, was, you know, pretty hard going. So, um, and the movie kind of showcases how we kind of got there. And at the moment, we've got something like 26 people on our team. So that's kind of unheard of. Well, I think the movie's working its magic and getting the word out there. And obviously, Jules, you're an example. Now you're actually managing, aren't you? Yeah, yes, I took that on last Thank year. God. <laughs> and she's now a caller. I decided that I was going to throw myself into it so and, and do everything. So when I was asked to become manager, I thought, yeah, why not? Give it a crack, Nige. So... Here I am. <laughs> and you can practice the calling at the same time. Come on! <laughs> <laughs> and, of course, you're getting more exposure for the for the whole dragon boat racing through, you know, people like myself finding you, and now it'll be all around Australia. And um, I'm sure that your fantastic enthusiasm and all the work you did on the movie in particular is going to inspire lots of other women to get involved. Yeah, we hope so, um, because it is, it, it's, we talk about it just, you know, we're full our team has a lot of camaraderie 
um, and we work together really well. Um, it's it's a nice place to be, and as I said before, emptying your brain on the water is just yeah, really rejuvenating. So, with the pink dragons, would you be aware of who's the oldest person who's ever been on the team? Currently, our oldest member is seventy-two. I want to say. Mm. Um, and we've had a couple of others in the team that have been in their mid to late 70s um, and still paddling strong. Age isn't a barrier <laughs> at all. Yes, well, this show is all about age is just a number. So that's, we're trying to get everyone out there getting active. To be fair, most of our team would be over 50. Yeah. Um, and the majority of breast cancer teams, I would say, would fit that same criteria. And, you know, to be fair, we don't want younger members because we don't want to have them having the joining criteria. Welcome to Pink Dragons. I'm so thrilled to have you. We didn't have very many paddlers and you girls are going to be filling our boat for us. So <laughs> welcome from the bottom of my heart. I'm Anne-Marie, in case you don't know, and this is our fantastic coach, Supu. He'll be walking you through. Morning, ladies. Welcome to Dragon Boating. I've coached uh, Pink Dragons for a number of years now. A lot of these newbies didn't know what dragon boning was, didn't know what a paddle was. Unco. I don't know if you've been told the truth, but dragon boating is hard work. It's about commitment. There'll be a bit of pain, be a bit of laughter, but we'll have fun, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So our training will start off nice and easy, but as the weeks go by, it gets harder and harder and harder until we're in our first major race, which is regionals. Winning gold, that's like winning, that's like me winning lotto. Dragon boating is very different and if you've never been in a boat, it's an experience. All right, Pinkies, come on, get in the boat. I'm going to make a complete fool of myself. I'm going to have to roll myself in there. I'm hopeless at things like this. No, Glenda, you're going to have to go to the right a little bit. We don't just take people and go, there, there, just be very careful. You don't want to hurt yourself. Come on, get in the boat. What's the coming over again. Get in the boat. You just go, there's your paddle, and just keep up. When you're new, you're lost. <laughs> you're not quite sure what you're supposed to be doing or how fast you're supposed to be doing and who you're supposed to be keeping up with. The first three strokes out, I was quite sure we'd capsized before we went past the dock. Is there a baler down there anywhere? Getting back to the training side of it, um, what sort of regular training do you do? Like how many times a week? What sort of commitment is it? And then what sort of commitment is it if you're heading into some something, you know, as big as this competition coming up? We train two nights a week, like um, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So it's like six o'clock to seven o'clock on the water. Um, and we're starting to get, um, I think this this week we'll start on Sunday. So it'll be th like, three, like uh, three days a week or three nights a week. And that and that just that just leads up to you know getting because on the Sunday training it's on lake water, which is completely different to salt water. Um, so it's getting you know getting used to you know being on you know different kind of water, and that and that's that's up until all the um, competitions. So I mean, it, uh, season starts was it September October, and finishes normally around about uh, April. And for those of us that are a bit hardier we kind of paddle right through the winter as well <laughs> so we do we do night paddling um which is absolutely gorgeous um we paddle down in the viaduct here in Auckland um so we're looking at the city all lit up like a neon light and the harbour bridge all lit up and it's just beautiful it's usually really calm um but yeah and it's not that cold 
So paddling is all year round mm. if you want to. So yeah, it helps you to keep fit, yes, to keep going all year yeah. round. And the friendship inside and outside of dragon boat racing. Yeah. yeah. So we do a lot of stuff. We, we've just been to a training camp up at um, Kaiwi Lake. And so a hundred crazy people go and camp um, and spend a couple of days um, paddling oh, around a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lake. Mm. Sounds fantastic. So what would you say to someone currently challenged with breast cancer sitting at home as to why they should have a go at dragon boat racing? Because it'll rebuild their strength and their soul. I mean, it's it's just amazing being around women who have gone through the same thing. Um, and, you know, some people like to talk about it, some people don't, and that's and that's fine. But just being with like-minded women, going through the same thing, it's brilliant. And, you know, and fitness is a bonus. If someone watching today is interested in finding out more about it for themselves, or maybe they've got a loved one that they'd like to think, oh, she might be interested in getting into it. How do they find out more information? In Australia, um, Dragons of Breast Australia. Um, if somebody Googles Dragons of Breast Australia, that will take them to a dragon boat club in all over Australia. There's teams almost everywhere. Mm. Um, so even inland Australia has teams. Well, ladies, thank you so much for sharing your stories with us today and, you know, for letting us know a bit more about that, the whole breast cancer survivor dragon boat scene, which is just bigger than Ben-Hur, I think. Any viewers watching today, I'm sure, will be really inspired by, by you today as well as, you know, by the movie. Thank you for having us. Thanks for watching our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what?